upon a time in the streets of Philly, it was a group that was lit. And this group went by the name of Ram Squad. Ram Squad was a group of artists that came from the Richard Island Projects. And at the time, they had the world in the palm of their hands. This is before the major figures and other groups that we know about from the city of Philly. At the time, Ram Squad, they gave a, a different energy and they showed people also what goes on in the streets of Philly by painting art through their music and by doing videos riding through the city with four wheelers and things of that nature. And within this group, the main star at the time was Tommy Hill, AKA Tommy Butter. Tommy Butter was someone that, like I said, was raised from Richard Island Projects and they chose to make something out of nothing. They were one of the groups that showed people that it don't matter where you're from or what you've been through, you can make it. As long as you put your mind to it and stay consistent. Now at this time, when Ram Squad was lit in the streets, they was getting all the support, man. He was, Tommy Hill himself was connected with a lot of people. And rumors has it that, you know, they had good relationships with the JBM. Kabani Savage, Shamster Dan Ali, and also Philly Mob boss, Joy Merlino. Now with having these relationships and these friendships, sometimes certain people might not want you to be too vocal about it. Other times, they like you to be vocal about it because it kind of boosts their stock to the world. So mainly at those times, a lot of gangsters in the streets, they pretty much didn't mind getting mentioned to be connected to certain people when it comes to rappers or celebrities of that nature because that just shows how important that that person is. With them running around in the streets, they still felt the way to be connected with celebrities and get respect from these celebrities. Now, as time go on, eventually, the Ram Squad they drop hits, drop hits, and then eventually the wave fades off as it does for every group and every generation of rap. By this time, we got the major figures coming up. We got after major figures, we got State Property, Rockefeller coming up. So by this time, it's pretty much over for the Ram Squad. Of course, their music was playing on Power 99 from time to time. And they do have a few bangers that, at the time, Philly was still turned up to. But once upon a time, bro, everything turned for the bad. It was an artist by the name of Boy Bax. And this artist, gave a t he testified on Tommy Hill during an indictment where his crib got ran in and they was threatening to arrest his baby mom and take his kids to children's services. So he chose to make a decision that he would give them what they want and what information that they have needed. And with that being said, part of the agreement was testifying on Tommy Hill. Now, one thing about Tommy Hill, of him coming up in Richard Island, the people that was around him seemed as though he showed a lot of love that he took care of people, tried to always put people in position, you know, and extended his hand. But one problem that Tommy Hill had was he chose a path that he wasn't ready for the repercussions of. And that was getting involved in the streets after he had already made it. He took it upon himself to get back in the trap as we know it. So with him hustling and, and, and doing work and, and you dealing with a lot of people, you never know who the informant will be. So it could be a year, it could be two years, three years, five years, and you got a case getting built on you. On top of you being a public figure, this is easy to pinpoint you. So one day, after Boy Bax gave his statement and everything 
now Tommy Hill has evidence against him that he's basically in the trap. Now at the time with him being in the trap, one big mistake that he was always making was, I know sometimes people are vocal and they might choose to say that they're in the streets to each his own. If you feel as though you got to tell the people and let the people know what you're actively doing, that's one thing. But Tommy Hill didn't say what he was actively doing in the streets. But what he was doing was he continuously mentioned people that were in the streets that had big names on interviews. He was always talking about Kabani Savage. He was always talking about Shamsterdam Ali. He was always talking about Joey Merlino. Now... Joey Merlino, of course, was a mob, a mobster, man. And the last thing that Joey Merlino would need is someone that at the time is under investigation for pushing weight to be mentioned in his name. Because what they do is they're going to automatically connect the guys that's in the streets, these guys that already have big names in the streets, and they're going to put you all in that funnel and draw unnecessary heat to the people that is being mentioned, whether or whether or not they have anything to do with the crimes that you chose to commit. So, one night, Tommy Hill was at Boston Market. So with Tommy Hill being at Boston Market, he had two ounces on him. All of a sudden, he's coming out of Boston Market, hops in the car. He gets ran down on. The cops were watching him. They blitzed him. They recovered the two ounces. When they recovered the two ounces, they took him in custody. And they wanted him to know that he's been under investigation. And that they know that he's active, that he's doing things in the streets. With him being such a high-profile person, in the allegations, he ended up getting put into federal custody. So when he's sitting in federal custody, one thing that I always heard is, if you in the feds, never talk about your case. Never, never say that you're guilty of anything because it's all types of informants, all types of people that's looking for a way out in the feds. And just as well as they have such a high conviction rate, they also have a high telling rate. So when rappers come to jail and you have street guys that's in the jail with these rappers, what they want to do is prove how solid they are in the streets, prove how much of a real person they are. When they don't realize that a lot of times when you do that, it's stories to the next ears. But certain people, if they had an opportunity, to turn you over they will do that in a heartbeat now Tommy Hill is someone that he wanted to live the luxury life he lived the luxury life you know things was rolling for him and he went up the path not realizing that when it get dark are you going to be able to sit in jail for 5 10 15 years these are decisions that we are responsible for as men whether you a celebrity or whether you in the streets that's why you hear people that are in the streets or are from the streets. They put so much pressure on grown men that get in situations and they want to tell because you knew what you was getting yourself into. So with that being said, Tommy Hill Sully, he chooses to speak about events that happened with someone close to him who life was taken. Now, with this person who life was taken, it might have been his brother. You know what I mean? I'll have to, uh, I'll actually drop the, drop a clip after this and um, get in the details of Tommy Hill testimony and everything. But as he's giving a guy, Tommy Hill, the information of his brother or his close friend life getting taken, he goes to speak on the retaliation. And when he speaks on this retaliation, he gets into precise details about what this guy has, what the whole situation is. And at this time, Tommy Hill's cell was being bugged because that's another thing that they do.
because they know when you in jail, when you in there with your celly, you might be comfortable. You might be trying to line up, you know, um, business deals from the jail, or you might be trying to set it up for when y'all come home to let people know what you can get your hands on. What can this person do for you? Who do this person know? So they had a cell bug. So they pulled Tommy in and they was going to recharge him. Tommy told, you know what I mean? He, he gave up the information and said that wasn't him talking because allegedly Tommy said that they were trying to say that that was him saying these things. And he immediately was like, no, no, that wasn't me. That was this guy. I don't have nothing to do with that. And in the streets, that's telling. Now, Tommy Hill eventually gets released from prison after he makes this testimony. This right here is the actual article of the testimony from Tommy Hill, a.k.a. Tommy Butter, in this case. And y'all can also find this on Google. Rapper testifies of alleged arsenal. A Kensington father and son's case is the first under a law of weapons of mass destruction. They said, relax and frequently smile and gangster rapper Tommy Hill seemed as comfortable yesterday as if the microphone before him were a part of a recording studio and not the witness then. Hill testified in a high profile common plea court trial against a Kensington man and his two sons who are the first to be charged under Pennsylvania's new law against weapons of mass destruction. A charge that defense attorneys maintain is being misapplied. Johnny Belmont, 61, Harry Belmont, 41, and Benjamin Belmont, 30, are accused of amassing an arsenal to protect their alleged marijuana distribution business. In a conversational tone, Hill told jurors that the drug war ignited on the 1700 block of North Marshall Street where Benjamin Belmont moved his marijuana cells onto a block which had been the turf of a crack dealer. After Benjamin Belmont's brother, Kimba Halim, was fatally shot in the house on April 2003, Hill said Benjamin told him he started to stockpile weapons and planned to pack old grenades with gunpowder for revenge. He was just kind of setting himself for war. Once they took his brother, it was all out. Hill testified looking directly at the jury. He said he had enough ambulation to take up to take an army to war. So just real quick, you know, in between him testifying, he also, you know, gave his perspective on saying that out of all the things he had, he had enough ammo to take a whole army to war. Hill whose real name is John Wilson, and who was the lead vocalist of the now defunct Ram Squad hip hop group, told Joris that he made five records. I rap reality, he'll explain to the jury. So today, you're just rapping to the jury, defense attorney Ty Essenberg asked sarcastically. So you got the DA that, you know, the DA, they normally want people to, to tell and things of that nature, but the DA is basically going at him like, you know what I mean? So the day you're rapping to the jury. So yes, this is a reality, Hill responded with smooth confidence. Yesterday was the first time the 29-year-old Hill had testified for prosecutors since pleading guilty in July to federal cocaine distribution charges and agreeing to cooperate. Now, I'm not going to get into to the whole situation because it, it, it's kind of long, but, you know, also, 
with this being said, it also made it more difficult for um, the guy that was getting convicted because this was after 9-11. When we see what's going on today in rap, where they're doing these indictments, Young Thug, Lucci, A.R. Ab, Rallo, and many others, what people don't understand is, yes, they will let you make the music, they will let you have that image, but what they want to do is, they also choose to send a message. Because at the end of the day, a lot of the times, you know, when you are, certain people's words are bigger than others, but I heard interviews and heard people even that are involved in gang culture where they said, if people like Larry Hoover was home, could they change what's going on in the streets? And it was said that we respect Larry Hoover, but no, what we got going on is different. It's no way out of this. We respect them and all of that, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. So what they do is they let you get the image, whether you are a gangster, whether you are active in the streets, they give you that image, let you build up. And then when they arrest these guys, they put the pressure on them because they want to embarrass them in front of the whole world just to show people that this person ain't who you thought that they were. So that's what happened to Tommy Hill. That's what happened to, to, you know, a lot of other artists, even like with Rollo. You know what I mean? Where you look at people at a certain gunner, you know what I mean? The list goes on. And I don't know the whole gunner situation, but I know his name has been thrown around. But to get back on topic, Tommy Hill was one of the first guys that he told. And after he told and he came home and it got put on blast, he did what 6 9 is doing, what 6 9 did, where he took ownership to it and he tried to, you know, um, glorify why he did it. So he stood on telling and then he explained why he told. But another thing that he did was he chose to pull other people down with him and try to you know, pretty much point out people that allegedly had told also. And two of the artists happened to be Beanie Siegel and Young Chris. I don't, I, don't, I don't feel like I was wrong, and I feel like if I was put in that same situation, I'd do the same thing again. God willing, I don't have to be in that same situation. But Beanie Siegel is smarter than that. Mm -hmm. You don't throw rocks if you live in a glass house. You know if you cooperated with the government... To, 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 matter of fact, let's not even talk about the government. Let's talk okay. about when Beanie was 19 years old. And this is public record. I'm going to send you the text, the email, so people can go look at it. Beanie Siegel was shot, and he was on the stand testifying against the guy who shot at him. In my book, that's a rat. That's a snitch. You can't call somebody a snitch when you're on the stand testifying against the guy who shot you. If you, if you, if you are. If you or you're knowledgeable about the federal laws and the federal guidelines, there's no, no such thing as a year and a day for being a felon with a gun. It's at least five years or more. Okay. So Beanie getting a year and a day is disrespectful to my man who got 25 years right now for having a bullet. Okay? Hmm. T.I. getting a year and a day and when he got all kind of ammunition, it, it, you get that just for a silencer. So we're not here to... Go uh, uh, salt on anybody's name. Right. We're saying be a man, dog. If you did something, stand up what you believe in and say this is why I did it. Okay? But don't throw rocks if you live in a glass house. And then let's go to young Chris. Mm -hmm. Young Chris took the stand on Spado for major figures. Check, go, Google this. Go online and everything. He took the stand on young Chris. Dutch has been saying this forever. Nobody would listen to Dutch. Now I'm saying it. You took the stand on Young, you took the stand on Spado. Spado is doing, what, 15 to 25 or whatever time he's doing, but Young Spado's in jail. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to talk about rats, then you can't be one. And that's just the point of that record. Okay. Now, we now, go to the next question. This footage was released after Young Chris allegedly threw some subliminals at Tommy Hill, and Tommy Hill felt as though Beanie Siegel had sick him on him, you know what I'm saying, had sick young Chris on him. 
So, as y'all might have heard, Beanie Siegel, um name was mentioned. And also, we heard Future. In the future days, you know what I mean? From that time, that you also heard, like, King Erno also, you know, gave allegations on Beanie Siegel telling now. I didn't look directly into that, but from my understanding, is what I heard was that Beanie Siegel was trying to like sue the, the the police or something like that due to the activity that had took place, and they asked him to testify, and then he said that he wouldn't testify. So a lot of times from the streets, it's just like if you slip and fall in the market or if it's something where you feel as though you have to sue. Um people thinking about getting the money you know what i mean they didn't he just and this is just me you know um assuming what beanie siegel intentions was he was like yeah i got out the situation i ain't have to do no time for it now let me sue the the, the police district for not upholding it and you know like violating my rights or whatever the situation was but i have yet to see any proof of beanie siegel taking a stand and testifying Tommy Hill also has a video where he's on the internet and trying to pull up the situation, but everything is articles. It's not an actual, it's not him, it's not Beans actually testifying just how on the internet you can look up Tommy Hill and other people that testify, their test of, you know what I'm saying? You can find their testimonies. Now, as far as young Chris situation i also haven't looked into that you know drop a comment if y'all want me to you know to dig deep into that um definitely a fan of state property chris was always a, a big influence you know but at the end of the day um that rumor has been floating but like i said it's a rumor nobody knows for sure um i heard personally back when i was younger that after the, the situation took place that young Chris told um, his mom or like the, the victim's mom of what had took place when his homie L.A. got his life taken. And allegedly um, someone down the grapevine had relayed the information that young Chris gave them. You know, so it's plenty of stories out there. I don't know for a fact. If what Tommy Hill said is true, but I do know that a lot of times when people do get court telling or they in a situation, if they can angle or point something out that someone else did that's similar to their situation, they will definitely drag them down with them. And then we had a clip where Oskino goes at Tommy Hill heavy, bro. He goes at him heavy. And this is because prior to this interview that I'm about to play, the clip of this interview, which was on the Batcave, shout out to the Batcave. Prior to that, Tommy Hill was on there. He came to Philly, came to the Batcave, came with artists that he was, you know, trying to sign and things of that nature. Well, that he had under his umbrella. And he was talking heavy. So Oskino came up after him, maybe like a week after him. You know what I'm saying? Oskino and, and it Gang Garcia, man. And they came up there, man. And they was talking, they talked. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, he wasn't even, he Oskino wasn't even really talking about Tommy Hill at the time. But Tommy Hill happened to call up the Batcave while Oskino was there. And then this took place. Boy, you got you. Hey, boy. Hey, wow. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Hold on, hold on, man. Yo, boy, you got your big body bends over there, boy. I swear. Yo, hey, yo, what up? Yes, What's up? What's up, hell? Boy, this, this, this chief folk, is this is the man. This P folk. Music? This is P folk right here. What's up? What up, baby boy? What's good with you? Everything's good, man. I'm, I'm listening to the show, man. I just, you know, I'm. I'm Please man, listen. What's going on? Like we listen to you talk, we ain't call the phone number trying and and and, and the rump. Let us talk like you talk. Don't call up. 
Let me do my Can thing. How you your thing? You know what I'm saying? This Oskino you speaking with. And I think and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So you talk, I talk to you. Thank you very much. When you was up. Clean though. Come on, keep it clean though. Damn, I'm so I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Listen, I'm not just saying. Like when we listen, when he was on the listen, when he was on the radio, nobody called. I dig it. We go. Nobody well, said nothing when he was on the radio. Nobody tried to come in and say any. Everybody let him have his floor. Alright. So, this, this is my floor. So, you just tune in and just listen. You don't have a floor. You're not big enough to have a floor in this city. You ain't even got enough to nerve to be in this city. You need sticky tracks. Right. Going, you need sticky it. tracks, you rat. You rat and you got caught with two ounces, you rat. You got caught with two ounces, you rat. You got caught with two ounces, you rat. Give your papa. My people's up, grad is for your pop up there. Go up, grad is for your pop, won't do nothing either, you rat. And y'all don't even have to worry about you coming up there, you rat, because you a toe. Before you come up there, you rat. Now you rat, rat. Yo, I don't even let my son watch Ratatouille, you rat. My son can't watch Ratatouille, you rat. Stuart Little, don't call up here. Let me do my talking, and you talk to me after this over, you rat. After this said happened, Oskino pretty much put the icing on the cake with Tommy Hill because those that wasn't even paying attention to Tommy Hill or wasn't aware of the situation, after Oskino and Garcia was on Batcave and went back and forth with him, and Oskino always stood on what he stood on. And he also talked about his father up Raiders Fort and how his father carried, you know what I mean? And um, that hit the air and went viral. It went everywhere. After that, Tommy Hill was damaged a lot. You know what I mean? After that right there, he did nothing but try to rebuild himself, rebuild himself. He tried as hard as he could, but that salt was so on his name that a lot of people didn't want to deal with him. And he had a few artists that was coming up and he would offer them money. So the average person from the streets, if you'd be like, y'all give you 25,000, just come sign. They'd take that. You know what I mean? They won't even care about the situation. They just want to be an artist. They might not be in the street stuff or they might be in the streets and they might be like, I can do this. I can do that with that 25 racks. You dig what I'm saying? So to each his own. But what I do know is Tommy Hill popped out Philly a few times. He got an interview where he did, and he was down Kensington and Allegheny. He did another interview he did. He was at a bar out Philly. I can't remember the name of it um, off top. He was there, did a clip in there. So by this time, he was comfortable. He was like, man, he only felt as though state property was the ones that really had an issue with him. And he knew that if he did bump into someone from state property, that they wouldn't go out their way to risk their life for taking his. Because at the end of the day, life was good for them as well. But this one night, Richard Allen is in North Philly. So he thought that he can come uptown, up Mount Airy, where a lot of people from certain parts of the city they look at Uptown and see the, the nice houses and feel like they safe, which they don't realize that you can get slid and this rap getting caught everywhere. I think today people understand, but at that time, a lot of people look at Mount Airy or West Oak Glen and they see the nice area and they feel comfortable. So Tommy Hill was in this bar in Mount Airy and felt comfortable. Now I remind you, this bar is on Stitton Avenue. Stitton Ave is a main road, bro. It's a main road. Like, it's not no little back block bar or nothing like that. You dig what I'm saying? There's people that do have houses up there. They taxpayers. You got people like cops and stuff like that that do live in that area because the area definitely looks nice. So he was up there. He was comfortable. He was chilling. He was drinking. He talking to the women. He talked because Tommy Hill always talked heavy. What Tommy Hill didn't know, 
was that someone in that bar was watching him. Someone in that bar saw him and they watched every movement. Nine times out of 10, if they was in contact with whoever tagged them that stepped out of that bar because there's no way in hell that you're going to tag somebody coming out of that bar because it's not like you down north or something like like that particular corner is a main street but people ain't driving up and down that joint like that that's from his hood or that's from people that he was connected to or that wanted his life taken everybody he dealt with was from down north now remind you the guy that he told on was from Kensington. Now, that's why Tommy Hill did that interview in Kensington. But at the time when he did it, the guy was still locked up. But he made sure that he stood in front of where you can see k &A. So he was busy trying to prove that regardless of what he did, he could move around how he want. So this night, he just wanted to come out Philly and he wanted to chill. Maybe it was someone that was with him. Maybe it was someone that saw him. But somebody pointed that man out. Because after he got all drunk and he got done talking, and he was like, all right, he was feeling good about himself. As he's walking out, smiling, dapping up everybody, he didn't know that those were going to be the last steps of his life. He opened that door up. And when he opened that door up and walked in and, you know, start going to his car, someone spun that block and ripped him out the frame. They made sure that he was done. Now, remind you, this is a bar. Well, sources tell us exclusively tonight, a well-known local rapper has died after being shot while coming out of a Philadelphia bar. Tommy Hill has had run-ins with the law before, including a high-profile drug trial back in 2004. The former head of the rap group Ram Squad also had ties to ex-mob boss Jody Moreno. Police are still investigating Friday night shooting. It happened outside Ruben's Mark Bar in the city's East Mount Airy section. Remind you, this is mid-2000s. By this time, there's cameras everywhere. He's on the avenue. You got street light cameras, all types of stuff. But for some reason, it's no witnesses. And to this day, there have been no arrests. This is why I say that this was the cleanest hit that was done from the time of Tupac and Biggie. It's just that his name wasn't as big to the world as Pac and Biggs. But if he was an A1 celebrity, you would still be talking about them investigating the case or doing this or doing that. But he was already labeled as an alleged gangster rapper from North Philly. So it became a cold case. It became a case where as you can see, the DA was even mocking this man in court. And with that being said, his life was taken. And to end it off, if y'all want a part two, I'll give it to y'all. But And we can talk about the whole Ram squad and get into the boy back situation and everything. But what I got to end this off with is his funeral. His funeral, which was held down Richard Island, down north, even after all the allegations and everything that happened, this man still had love from his hood, man. People didn't care that he told or whatever. I guess they looked at him for who he really was, and they knew the true Tommy Hill. They seen him grow up, they seen him come up, and he was always still connected with people around there, but at the time that he told... It was street guys that was like, bro, you repping our projects wrong. So that's why to his last years, he wasn't floating around Richard Allen. But as y'all about to see on this video, this was Richard Allen's response to his funeral. On the last day of Tommy Hill, a.k.a. Tommy Butter, body 
surfacing in the streets of Philly before he went six feet under. So just remember, man, when you are out here moving, whether you do something wrong, like telling, whether you feel like you got ops, man, don't get too comfortable. Don't think because you a half hour away from your hood or because you over here or over there. The same way that Tommy got hit is a lot of ways that other people got hit because so many people are looking for the people that they have issues with when they don't realize that it's easy for a person that have an issue with you to point this picture out or to, to their homies or someone recognize you, especially being a public figure. So when people be like they outside and they, they do this and do that, if you from the streets, that means nothing, man. When you hit a certain age, especially when you have kids and stuff like that, man, it's time to fall back, grow old. Of course, you want to spin through every now and then. But there's no point to prove out here, man. Your life is the most valuable thing that you can ever have. You dig what I'm saying? Because especially being a man and having a family. But I'm not going to stretch it out. But I want y'all to check this last clip out where Tommy Hill, a.k.a. Tommy Butter, last day was. And just the unity that the people did have out there, man. Now, I'm not going to be biased and, and say he was this and say he was that. It's up for the people to judge. You know what I'm saying? But this is the Hub Blogger. Make sure y'all sub, hit the like button. And I'm going to end it off like this, man.